In this next section, we are going to be talking about different types of employees that we get and the different tax rates which are applicable to them when calculating employees tax. This is not as common to see in exams and tests. In fact, I can't recall ever seeing any of this really being asked. Okay, so let's talk about it. So the first thing I want you to understand is that there is a document or a, a, a publication which is called the Guide for Employers in Respect of Employees Tax. Exactly like it's written there. You can go and Google that and find that on the SARS's website. That is where these information that I'm talking about is contained. It's not in your legislation. Okay, so basically what I wanted to understand is they say that if you are a part-time employee or a casual employee, then the tax rate is at 25%. It's a flat rate. Okay, so let me explain to you quickly what this means. We'll talk about what it means to be a part-time employee. But for now, assume that you are a part-time employee. So a part-time employee is a person who works, doesn't work permanently for an employer, they only work a certain amount of time. If I take you just to the next page, this is all from that SARS guide, it tells you standard employment, so that is when you are fully employed, is when you work 22 hours or more for an employer. So a part-time employee is a person who works for less than 22 hours a week for an employer. So if you, let's say, you work for an employer for um, 8 o'clock in the morning until 12, so four hours a day, and you do it on a Saturday and a Sunday. So you work on weekends, let's say. And your employer pays you, uh, let's say, 30 rands per hour. Right? So it'll be four hours times 30 rands, 120. And that amount times 25%. That is the employee's tax that should be withheld. So it's just straightforward to 25%. If it's an independent contractor, so an independent contractor, as we referred to previously, is a person who's ex completely separate from you. So, for example, my, if I get a plumber to come and do something at my house, that person is an independent contractor. They're not related to me. I will not withhold any employee's tax. I'll just pay them whenever they invoice me. Then we get labor brokers and personal service providers. Okay. Now, let's quickly talk about a labor broker. Now, a labor broker, we will go into a bit more detail a little bit further down here, as you can see. Basically, what a labor broker is, let's say here's a labor broker. And this is one of the, in South Africa, labor brokers are very common. It is something which a lot of people have issues with politically. Right, what is a labor broker? So, here is X Limited. X Limited is a company, let's call it a construction company. And they are busy building, uh, let's say, a small block of flats. Right. And for this, they need 50 unskilled workers. So basically just people who carry bricks and mix cement and so forth. This labor broker over here. So how it works is the employees... Right, I'm not going to draw 50 of them, but 50 of them. All of these employees, they work for the labor broker. X Limited then goes to the labor broker and says to the labor broker, I want 50 people. This labor broker then goes and gives these people to X Limited. Now, what, what, what does that mean for us? X Limited, are these people employed by X Limited? No, they are not. They are employed by the labor broker. So, X Limited will pay the labor broker, let's just say, a thumb sucking amount here, 100,000 rands. And the labor broker will then pay 80,000, let's say, to its employees, and it will split that up between them, right, according to whatever contract he has with them. So the labor broker gets compensated for arranging people. At the end of this project, X Limited walks away. Because these employees aren't employed for them, and that is what politically why people have an issue with it also, because they're saying you're outsourcing it, X Limited should be responsible for these people for, in terms of labor law and so forth. Right, I'm not here to argue points for and against it, I'm basically just here to tell you the tax treatment. So, this labor broker over here, what I want you to understand is X Limited is required to withhold employees tax on that amount there. So, when X Limited pays the labor broker, it will pay, 
just to show you, I'm going to go back. 28%, right, because the labor broker will be a company. So X Limited will say, pay as you earn is 28,000. And uh, the rest is the payment, let's say 72,000. So the labor broker is entitled to 100,000 rands, but they'll only receive 72,000 rands in cash because X Limited must withhold pay as you earn. Then, when this labor broker pays these people, these employees, they will also calculate pay as you earn. The labor broker will do his own tax return, or its own tax return, and this will be a prepaid tax, which I'll take into account as normal. So everything works as the same. Okay, but now, there are situations, I'm just going to take you up, where the labor broker can give a certificate to X Limited, and then there will be no tax withheld. So I'm going to just take you. So if there is a certificate here, this employee's tax of 28,000 will be taken out and it will become null so that they will be paid the full 100,000 rands. Now again guys, like I said, this is not very common to see. I just want you to be aware of it. So let's talk about that labor broker quickly. The commissioner shall an application made by him, by any person who is a labor broker, issue a certificate of exemption. So if there is a certificate of exemption, how much tax is going to be withheld, guys? No. Right. So when will they withhold? When will they give that? When will the commissioner give it? If such person carries on an independent trade and is registered as a provisional taxpayer, if he is registered as an employer, and if the commissioner, if this person has submitted all of their returns, Right, now guys, this, they will tell you in the exam if a person has a labor certificate. Provided that, the commission shall not issue a certificate if. So in other words, make sure when will there not be a certificate. If more than 80% of the gross income comes from any one client, unless that person employs three or more full-time employees on a full-time basis, and who are not connected persons. So they're saying if 80% of your income comes from one place, so on my little example I used here, everything of this labor broker comes from X Limited. So then there would not be a, uh, a certificate that they can issue because everything comes from one person. However, if this labor broker employs three or more full-time employees, then it is ignored and they can still get it. Right, the certificate of exemption shall be issued by the commissioner and the employer shall not be required to deduct with employee's tax from the remuneration if that is the case. Right, guys, so be aware of it. But like I said, not as common to see. Then the personal service provider. So personal service providers, you would have studied previously when you looked at the different types of taxpayers and different types of companies, when you studied things like small business corporations and so forth. Now remember, a personal service provider is a situation where a person also goes and then takes out or creates a company which functions as a personal service provider. Right, so here's X Limited. Mr. A works for the personal service provider. X Limited wants Mr. A to come and do work for them. X Limited then pays the personal service provider. Personal service provider, which is Mr. A's company, pays Mr. A. Right. Again, if there's 100,000 rands there, X Limited will deduct 28,000 rands, pay as you earn, and the rest will be a cash salary of a <laughs> cash salary of 100 or 72,000 rands. Right, the difference. Right. So it's 28% if the personal service provider is a company, and it's 45% if this personal service provider is a trust. So then it just becomes 45,000. Right, so guys, personal service provider will also have employees tax on it, which is just what we discuss over here.